Hello guys, ignore me talking right now. I'm on a boat, a speedboat, and it's loud, obviously, because it's a speedboat. This is my Brazil vlog part two. It's day five, and we're on our way to a local community right now to learn about how they live, what they eat, do some interviews, and yeah, welcome to part two. This actually was one of my favorite parts of the trip. It was very, very cool. There were 17 families that lived in this community uh, and like 50 people. And it started with them walking us through their garden and showing us all the different types of medicinal plants that they grow. It was very this cool. This is very good for truth. This is the little blue and gold macaw, it's a baby. This community takes in like a couple orphaned ones that they find in the wild every year and they just supplement feed them and soft release them. In the US, probably not the best, but this isn't a protected forest and there are very few people that live here, so it's okay. And it gives these birds a, a chance at life when they otherwise wouldn't have one. Here's some scarlet macaws, same thing. He was a little suspicious of me. This was their gift shop, so cool. These are all made in this community or in surrounding communities. And you can come in here and buy a bunch of stuff. I spent over a hundred USD at the shop on gifts for people, for my family and friends and stuff. I was, I was really excited about it, it was very cool. So random, I don't know what kind of owl this is, but kind of same thing as the macaws. Somebody found the baby in the wild and is helping supplement feed it until it fledges. There's a hawk here that they've seen apparently for 17 years around this community it could be not the same individual probably but could be i don't know anyway that was the local community it was so cool they were all very nice i learned a lot national geographic this is a wasp eating a moth okay, it's actually that's actually really cool i forgot that i saw that it's a little graphic content warning sorry all right sadly we're leaving this hotel i say sadly because it's my favorite hotel place i've ever stayed in in my whole life but we're going back to the boats so we can go see the Purple Martins again. So we have like a three hour bus ride here. Oh, bus ride's over, we're on a boat. That was so fast and easy. I love vlogging. Now we're getting on a boat. This is my last chance here on this ride to film the last of my script. I don't know what that clip was. So I am studying my script and my lines for the Purple Martin video that's gonna come out next week because this is our last chance to get all the footage that we need. High stakes. Here's me studying the script, editing the script on a boat, hoping to not lose the script because for some reason I only brought one paper copy, which is insane to do on a river in the Amazon rainforest. I did not lose the script though. We got to the Purple Martin Island and then we had to sit and wait for the sun to set because the birds all come back down to eat a bunch of insects when the sun sets. Here they are. You'll see footage of them in the actual Purple Martin video. I was filming that video, not vlogging, when they came down. So I didn't get very much vlog footage, I apologize. But you'll see it! Smile. I think I'm happy there because we got all the footage that we need. Oh, we did get stuck though, on the way out. We waited there for a couple hours for the birds and then by the time we went to leave, all of this floated in. So our guides had to push it all away so we could leave. They did it though, shout out the guides. Yay. Flip ate a bug, yum. <laughs> All right, we made it out. Passed, L. Where are we now? What is this? We're on a bus going somewhere. Perhaps the market? Wait, let's see if this is the market. If it is, I get a co- Oh, welcome to the market. I get a cookie. There's a bunch of vendors here. There's foods. There's lots and lots and lots of gifts. This is neat. A fish market. It was cool. I think I spent like an hour, maybe two hours here. Just walking around, checking stuff out. This is not for the vlog. That's not for the vlog. I took that video for somebody, okay. The market was not all like this. Most of it was not like that. This is the fish market. They have arapaima there. That's that like giant fish skin, huge fish. I got some stuff at the market, put it in my bag, and then we headed back to the hotel. I'm laying out all of the gifts that I've gotten to make sure that I have everything that I need for everybody. So I have my staff, like they all get a little thing, except Connor gets a slide whistle. I have, this is for cutie. I found beads. They're made out of acai here. So she'll get beads and some candy. Boyfriend, friends, friends, mom, dad, niece, nephew. I th and that's all stuff that I got. Sister, I think this is everything. All I have to get is one more of these for somebody. And then I think that's it. I bought myself a hairpin and I've been looking for a hairpin for a really long time, but I didn't want to buy one off of Amazon. And I found them here and it's a little manatee. And I'm going to see, I've never done this. I've only watched it on TikTok and I want to see if I can use it. It's like, it's supposed to hold your hair up. I think you go like this and then you go up and then you go down and then you stick it in there. That felt right. Me thinking that it's in there and it looks, it's not. Oh. I gotta do it higher, but that's in there. What am I doing? 
Oh, I was playing a game I saw on TikTok where you film in front of an elevator and it's like a game of chicken because you don't know if someone's gonna be there and be embarrassed. So this is me waiting to see if someone's gonna come out the elevator. But I think I, if I remember correctly, I got way too scared and I gave up. Yep, right before the elevator opened. Turned out it was empty though, so I could have done it and been successful. Okay, now we're driving again. Where to? Beats me. Anyone Don't remember. <laughs> do you guys like these voiceovers? <laughs> Maybe I should do them closer to the tree. <laughs> oh, we went to go see parakeets, white winged parakeets. Okay, actually very cool. There are these little green parakeets. This is where they, I mean, they live in the Amazon, but it's been fragmented quite a bit because of Manaus. This is the city, but they still land on these trees in the center of the road. You can tell by where all of the leaves are missing on the branches because this is where they land and they, this is their roost. The theory is that they like islands. Uh, and so the road kind of mimics an island because it keeps them safer from predators as opposed to just being in a tree in the middle of the jungle. So they like these island trees, but it's really crazy to see these wild birds really find a home and adapt to the city. Obviously not ideal. A lot of them get killed by cars and big semis coming through here, but they're doing okay. And it's crazy to see so many of them. They're very, very loud. Anyway, we saw the parakeets, then we went back to the hotel. This is not the hotel. This is the National Institute of Amazonian Research. We must have gone to the hotel that night and I didn't record going to bed because this is the next day. This is going to the National Institute of Amazonian Research. I met with Mario Conhaft. He's a staff researcher there and the curator of birds. I met with some entomologists here and I got to see their insect collection. This was the coolest part of the trip. People, look at this my dream. These are all invertebrate specimens. Look, there's scorpions in there. There's a goliath bird-eating tarantula right there. You see that? You see that? These are specimens that have not been categorized or labeled yet. And she showed us like their station. <laughs> Look at them. Sorry, I should probably, I'm probably peeking the mic. Scorpions. So, so cool. Dude, they've discovered so many invertebrate species at this facility. It's amazing. They have between 1.5 and 2 million specimens here. And so they pulled out some of these boxes to show us. This guy has discovered, I think, 15 species of bees. And he is showing me specimens at the National Institute of Amazonian Research. Look how amazing these are. Look at them. The diversity, the colors. That's a grasshopper. Are you serious? I think that's a wasp. I don't know, is that a tarantula hawk? No. Butterflies, amazing. Look at that proboscis that, it's like a giant built-in straw. Okay, you see all those wooden drawers? They're all drawers like the ones we were just looking at. Like he had pulled those out of these hallways to show us they're all in these drawers. Did you see how many drawers there were? He's showing me his bees. These are his favorite. He collected a lot of those. He's very proud of them because he studies bee taxonomy. These are some moths that he was showing us. So cool. And then we went on a walk around the National Institute of Amazonian Research and I saw this agouti. Look at that. It's a little, it's a little rat squirrel thing. These are all the animals that are at the preserve. Look at him. I think it's a pied tamarind. I don't quite remember. We went on a walk around the institute. Beautiful, it's amazing. They have a bunch of trails. I d hug death, I, I don't, nobody could actually translate this for me. And that's what it pointed to. And I still don't know what that is. I never figured it out. If anybody knows what that is in the comments, please tell me. I don't know what hug death means. I saw this turtle and he saw me. Oh, he didn't like me. Look at this chair, looks comfy. Look, another agouti, little rat thing. Little kangaroo, little rat, capybara rat. Look at those legs. Looks like he has high heels on. What the heck? Such a weird animal. This is a black caiman. I always think of caiman as being really small, but black caiman can be like 18 feet long. <laughs> I like him. Oh, these are squirrel monkeys. Saw lots of squirrel monkeys. They're very cute. I will note, I don't know if they're invasive, but they are causing a problem. They're pushing out pied tamarins. The pied tamarins are critically endangered and there are a bunch of squirrel monkeys that are taking over their habitat. So while these are really cute, I think they are a, a problem in this area. Oh my gosh, look at them. Some stingless bees. Dead. They're just nice guys. They have houses for the bees that don't sting. Look at them, look how cute they are. Oh, he wanted to be the star. So cute. This is a little, I don't know if it's a leaf cutter ant or what. You can't see the ant because, you know, he's carrying a leaf, but I just thought it was cool. They're very strong. There's an example, little ant. Oh, check out this luggage spin. I'm back in a new hotel. And by new hotel, I mean it's the first hotel that I went to where I couldn't figure out the AC the first night. But now I know. 
Now I'm gonna be smooth sailing in comfort right now. Right now. Right now. My key doesn't work. We're going somewhere again. Who knows where? Not me. <laughs> couldn't couldn't guess. Maybe dinner? Oh, we're on a bridge. It's pretty. It's a nice day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! This is actually cool. These are ruins, not ancient ruins though. They're ruins like I don't like a hundred years old or something. It was a prison at one point, it was a school at one point, and then it was a leper colony for people with leprosy. And now it's just become this like overgrown, overtaken building that's just incredible. A lot of people say when they go in here, it just feels really heavy and like they feel there's been a lot of people in a lot of pain in this building. And they say they can feel that. I did not. I don't know if I'm just not spiritual enough or if I was too focused on how cool the nature was and like the bugs and the trees. I don't know. Regardless, very like insane place. So cool. It just felt like being in a movie. We hung out here for about an hour, just like walked around, checked it all out. It was awesome. Very The Last of Us vibes. Very post-apocalyptic, beautiful, spooky, mysterious. Then we left. Now it's nighttime. Where are we going? It's gotta be the hotel. Where else could we be? It's not nighttime. It's four in the morning. We're going on a hike. <laughs> I found this dog. Dog. It's a cute one. It's four in the morning. That's why it's dark outside. We are about to climb up I'm a, I think it's a 140 foot tall tower. We have to walk into the jungle in the dark and then climb up a tower in the dark so that by the time we're at the top of the tower, it's sunrise. Me vlogging. <laughs> it's just black in my phone. Yeah. It's there. It's right there. I swear. There's a lot of stairs. A lot of stairs. I do feel it in my legs like a little tiny bit. Already? But surely we're like halfway there. You just started. I know. A lot of stairs. Honestly, climbing up this tower was not as bad as I thought it was. My legs were burning for sure, but I thought it would be scarier and I thought it would be harder. Okay, update. I do feel it in my legs. And I'm breathing harder now. We must almost be there. It was pretty chill. Now we're at like canopy layer, like actually at the top of the trees. Oh yeah, don't look down there. You'll hate that. Flip is afraid of heights. Fun fact. Oh no. It's rain, no? No. Please. Yes it is. That's like what you got. It's I felt it, it's rain. Don't make me think about it. Yeah, now we're almost there. Yeah. Wow. Easy peasy, it took me like Approximately 30 seconds. Well, it is raining. We had to go down a story uh, to protect ourselves from the rain and just hope that it stops raining by sunrise so that we can film the sunrise because this is where my Amazon video intros are filmed. It still looks beautiful, but it is the rainforest and it is raining. The only problem with it raining uh, and having storms, being on a 140 foot tall metal tower, is the potential for lightning. But what are the odds, right? It's raining. Yes, good observation. I think that was a macaw, but I couldn't tell because the clip was so short. All right, climb down the tower, easy peasy. Took way less time, as you can see. Now we're walking through the rainforest. We're hiking. It was very humid at this point, but this was probably the most immersive rainforest experience I had on the whole trip. Check out this tree. Holy cow. They say a large tree in the Amazon can put off 10 bathtubs of water every day. Look, oh, the dog's no. back. Are you driving <laughs> off on her? No, thank you, stinky. Stinky. Stinky like to rub on uh... our legs and transfer the stink. I put him with my foot because he was stinky. This is the museum of the Amazon, Musa. The people who work at Musa take care of this dog and a couple cats there. Oh, the cat in question. Beep, beep. We became fast friends. I have two dogs um, and a ferret. Rainforest ASMR. Cat. Sleepy cat. Little feet. He knows something. Oh, he just remembered something from his past. War. 
And then I got a grilled cheese. It's not called a grilled cheese, but it's cheese and bread. Oh, then we went to the arachnid house, and the guide showed us all the arachnids the with black light. There's scorpion. Harvestman? Look at those stripes. So cool! I love dogs! Oh, that's a tailless whip scorpion. He's cute. They have uh, long legs. This one is a second bigger in the... He's cute. The Amazon. Second biggest spider in the Amazon. They have a venom, but nothing goes for us. It's not the same effect. This one causes an erection. This one causes <laughs> yeah. an erection. Yeah. That's not good. Is yeah, what he just said. Yeah. That's a, a wandering she spider. You. <laughs> and if it bites you, I, I, apparently you get an erection and then you die. I need to do more research, but that's what he just said. Look at all the baby spiders. Cute. And then we went in this fungus house where they have a bunch of mushrooms that are native. Look at these. So cute and small. Wow, fungus. Wow, fungus. I took a video of this because I've never heard of this animal in my life. It's called a silky anteater. Never heard of it, but apparently they live here. Another agouti. They're everywhere. Squirrel rat. They're fast. <laughs> That's a ant, and we were trying to figure out if it's a bullet ant. I put my hand really close to it when we were trying to figure out if it was bullet ant because I wanted a size comparison. Don't do that. This is a giant sloth skeleton replica. This is a prehistoric alligator skeleton replica. This is a fertile ants. It's a venomous snake. Fertilance. We're in a, an educational building. They had quite a few fertile ants and some vipers. I think they have students here and interns and stuff and then they just teach the public about some of the animals that live in the preserve right outside. These are some specimens. These are some, some skeletons. This is actually really cool. They had a jaw of a snake and I always talk to people about the backwards facing teeth that snakes have, but this was a really cool example of that. Check this out. This is an anaconda skeleton. Really cool display of it. Big snakes. If you've ever wondered what a snake skeleton looks like, there you go. They had this giant freshwater tank where they have arapaima. Hello, arapaima. How are you? Big fish, dude. Big fish. Don't call him that. I said don't call him that. Flip called him a monster. This was an orchid house. They just have a ton of orchid species. Orchids are a parasitic, I think they're technically parasitic flower. They grow on other trees and they have lots of different smells and colors and whatever. Orchids are very cool. Then we went in this butterfly house, saw a bunch of cool butterflies. The Amazon has some amazing butterflies. They're like really big and really dramatic. This one was being a really great ambassador because he was sitting right next to his sign so I could learn about him and film him. He's an educator. <laughs> I forget what this one's called. I forget what they're all called, let's be honest. This is back at the National Institute of Amazonian Research. Joe told me to go up these stairs to get to the office. Okay, rude. We did interviews there with Mario Conhaft for the Amazon video. He's amazing, an amazing ornithologist and staff researcher at the Institute. And then after that, we went out to dinner and Joe and I shared a Brazilian beer and I got to try it. It was really good. It's like the Maya size glass. Yeah. <laughs> they gave me Maya size glasses. Cheers. Look, there's a doggy. That's his restaurant. He owns it. Here's another doggy. She also owns this restaurant. She walks around looking for food. Joe and I actually had a couple of these beers. It was it was good beer. I probably had too much of it, maybe. And then we got little, I don't remember what these are called, but there's jambu in it. It was like a savory, kind of like an empanada. And then we got fries, yum. This is the courtyard, getting a little nightlife experience. Ah, yes, the Brazilian nightlife children's clown, a classic. I've never really understood why people are afraid of clowns, to be honest, they've never bothered me. What the heck? How is that going so far? I don't know. Cats everywhere. Cat, cat, cat. Breakfast, next morning. We got back home, I got breakfast, I got a little coffee cake. Wait, this is lunch. Oh my god. I don't know what happened in between breakfast and lunch, but here's lunch. Dude, these were so good. It's like a tapioca fried stick, hash brown. Oh, they're so good. I thought that was a cheese pull, but it's not cheese. And then I got these shrimps in a stew. It was good. And then I saw these pigeons. Wait, look, there's drama, I remember. Fight! Drum! Oh my god, what do you think they're fighting about? And then we went and got frozen yogurt. Yum! Yum! Delicious.
I sat in the back with all these children's toys. Then we went to dinner that night. We went to a pizza place and there were kittens. Little kittens. Oh my God, so cute. Okay, our pizza was really good, right? We got like a really solid pizza and then we got dessert pizza, which I saw this picture and I was like, oh, it looks so good. It's Nutella and strawberries on a pizza, but there was mozzarella cheese underneath the chocolate. Oh, there's some cheese. I was trying to get a cheese bowl cheese and I didn't get it. There's cheese in there. It was not good. It wasn't good. I refuse to shout out Brazilian dessert pizza. Granted, I don't think it's really a thing. Then we saw some martial arts demonstrations just for the restaurant patrons here. I don't know if they asked for it, but they're getting it. Pretty cool. Oh, we're back with the clown. Oh. You know what? No, I do get it. Time to leave Brazil. This was at like three in the morning or something. The airport was empty. There was nobody here except for me and Flip. Time to do the travel home. This trip was genuinely amazing. I am so grateful to be able to do stuff like this. Obviously, thanks to Purple Martin Conservation Association and Amazonas Eco Tours, but also to you guys because I couldn't do stuff like this, obviously, uh, without your support. So thank you so much. I really hope that I'm making important content here. I know these vlogs are pretty chill and just for fun, but we went there to film some really important videos. I'm excited for you guys to see them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting all of this. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you guys like the Amazon videos that are coming out very, very, very soon. Next video. Let me know what you think of the vlogs. Like and subscribe. I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you. Goodbye.